It's a brand new year. And this morning as I got up and looked out the window, it was still dark, but a little bit later when I went out to get into my car, I looked over at the Massanutten Peak. And as often is the case, a beautiful sunrise was taking place. Even though it's a cloudy day, there was a hole in the sky. The sun was coming up. The color was the sky was painted the colors that only God can create. It was absolutely breathtaking. In fact, when Kirsten came out a few moments later to get in the car, she said, Dad, did you see the sunrise? And I said, yes, I did. She goes, isn't it absolutely beautiful? And it certainly is. But I want you to know that 2015 is a year that is filled with opportunities. It is a year that still, with it being January 4th, has 362 blank pages. Now, you've already started to write on the fourth page of that. But I understand that it's a book that is blank, waiting for you to make entries into. And if you're not happy with the way your life has been, you're not happy with the way things are going, if you want more, if you are desiring to know God in a more meaningful way, or maybe you don't desire to know God in a more meaningful way, but you know down deep in your heart that you need to. That God's been stirring many of you, and I am so thankful for that. Many of you have stepped forward and have volunteered for different ministries in the church, but I'm talking about that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Being the man, being the woman, being the boy, being the girl that God has created you to be. You're not just here taking up space. You're not just here breathing in and breathing out air. But in God's eyes, you're special. God made you in his very image. God said it then, and I believe that God is saying it today as well. You can change your circumstances. And today, with the help of the Holy Spirit, I would like to speak to you on the subject of 2015, change it. 2015, change it. Change it for the glory of God. Change it so that you will be an individual that will be a recipient of God's best in your life and recognize that it is possible because with God, nothing is impossible. Heavenly Father, we thank you today so much for the truth of your word. And today, your servant stands in need of a fresh touch, a fresh anointing. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would walk before me into this pulpit. Touch my mouth, touch my voice, touch my mind. I pray, God, that you'll help us to be able to articulate the truth of your word. And might it prove to be an inspiration, might it prove to be an encouragement. And might people begin to see themselves through your eyes and the potential that is there. That, Lord, you have created us in your very image. You have indwelt us with none other than your own Holy Spirit. And today, God, we can do great things for the kingdom of God if we will move in obedience to your will. So give us an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying today. I pray that we'll be challenged. I pray, God, that we'll be motivated. And Lord, may we shake off the spirit of complacency and move on, that we can see great things accomplished for your kingdom. We ask these things in Jesus' matchless name. And all of God's people said, amen. As I said, you can change your circumstances. It is time for each and every one of us to set a new course and make a new plan of action. It's time for us to realize that a change is going to do you good. Now let me ask you a question. Does anybody here need victory in your life today? Anybody here need victory in your life today? Well, God is ready to deliver not just a victory, but a complete victory in every situation of your life. Because he's already been victorious over every situation you've encountered or you ever will encounter, you can know that you can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth you. He has already taken care of whatever you stand in need of today at the cross of Calvary. There's nothing, I repeat, there is nothing that can stand up to what he did when he died on the cross for each and every one of us. So why? Would any of us here today just settle for victory 
when we can have complete victory in and through Jesus Christ our Lord. Can you say amen? Now, something that you battle with, something that I battle with when we talk about being victorious in every area of our life is the fact that many times I don't feel worthy of it. I feel as though it's for everybody else but me. And the reason for that is because I know me better than anybody else in this room. You know you better than anybody else in this room. And as you look at your life, a lot of times you feel unworthy. You feel like you're not good enough. But I am so thankful today that the word of God tells me that even when you and I were sinners, Jesus Christ loved us and he demonstrated that love for us, that he came and he paid the price for your sins and mine on the cross of Calvary. He washed us with his precious blood. He clothed us in his robe of righteousness. And because of that, we are worthy. Because of Jesus, we have been made worthy as recipients of God's best. The truth also is the fact that victory is available to each and every one of us as a born-again believer 24-7 each and every day. I want you to look together with me, if you would, at Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 13. It's a very familiar passage of Scripture. You might be sitting there thinking, Pastor Jeff sure does use that scripture an awful lot. And you're absolutely right, because I love it. I love what it says. I love it that when I'm feeling down, it has a way of picking me up. When I'm beginning to get discouraged, when I'm beginning to doubt that God's concerned about me, that God has a vested interest in me, it reminds me of this reality. Notice what it says. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. You know, I love talking about God's plan for each and every one of us. Even those of you today who may be sitting there thinking that you are not worthy of what God's word says. But I'm here to tell you today that Satan may try to convince you you're not worthy of God's goodness or blessings, but that's not what the Word of God tells us. Do you know that making a plan requires a lot of thought? But notice here, God doesn't just use the singular term. In other words, God says, I don't just have a thought toward you, but I have thoughts toward you. And that would say to me that God just doesn't have a plan for me, but he has plans for me. You see, God has thought long and hard about multiple ways, using multiple streams of blessings to provide you with a hope and with a future. No matter where you are in life, no matter what you may be facing, God has plans for you to bring you back and to bring about good things in your life. Praise God. Now, 2014 may have been a year that was filled with a lot of disappointments, it may have been failed, filled rather, with a lot of failures. It may have been filled with a lot of heartaches and a lot of things that you would like to forget. But I'm here to tell you that just as the sun came up today over Massanutten Peak, bringing into your life and into mine a brand new day filled with opportunities, so this brand new year of 2015 holds unlimited potential, unlimited possibilities that if you're not happy with the way things are going, change it because with our God, all things are possible. Even if you think that you're at the end of your rope, look up and you'll discover God's hand is extended, ready to pull you up. My mom had a poster years ago, and it said, if you're at the end of your rope, tie a knot. If you're at the end of your rope, tie a knot. Friends, I'm here to tell you today, there's hope in Jesus Christ. He has come to set the captive free. He has come to give you a joy that the world cannot take away. He has come to give you a meaning to life. Quit allowing circumstances to get you down and start looking to the author and finisher of your faith. I challenge you this morning. If you can believe, God can and he always will deliver. If you can believe, God can, and he always will deliver. When God said he wants you to have an abundant life he has promised, he meant it. And don't be the one to cheat yourself out of what God wants to do and accomplish in your life. Hear me this morning. If you're not living the abundant life that God promises, don't blame it on God. I'm going to say that again. If you're not living the abundant life that God promises 
Don't blame it on God. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not into your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. You can do that, can't you? Of course you can, because God's word declares you can. Philippians 4.13 tells us, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Now friend, this isn't just a Bible verse written to give us the warm fuzzies. But rather this is a life-changing declaration that was given to the Apostle Paul and to every one of us who bear the name of Christian. That means that everything that we do with Jesus involved in the details, we can accomplish. Why? Because the Word of God tells us that we can. In the book of Genesis, chapter 39, we read the account of a young man by the name of Joseph. Now, Joseph was a spoiled brat. I mean, let's just call it like it is. In the early stages of his life, he was daddy's favorite. His other brothers could not stand him. They were jealous of him. He got away with things that they could never hope to get away with. And topped things off, his dad gave him a coat of multicolors. It was an absolutely beautiful coat. And his brothers were jealous of him. As a result of that, they had sold him into slavery down into the land of Egypt. But you know, God was with Joseph even through the learning process. In fact, we read in Genesis chapter 39, verse 3, that everything that Joseph set his hand to prospered. Everything. Now, I want to encourage you with that verse this morning in understanding together with me that God is not a respecter of persons. What God did for Joseph, he will do for you as well. Everything that you as a child of God set your hand to, God can prosper it as you are yielding your life over to him. Now, I'm not talking about prosperity, preaching, name it, claim it, and, you know, everything is about money. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is this. As a child of God, you can claim the power of God in different circumstances, in different situations, and you can believe that God is going to bring you through that trial, and as a result of having brought you through, you're going to be a better person, and you're going to see the blessings of the Lord begin to unfold in your life. God says in his word that he will never allow his word to return unto him void. You see, we need to believe that everything is possible to him that believes. God has said in uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 3, that God gives a measure of faith to everyone. Do you fit into that category? Absolutely. So do I. God has given each and every one of us a measure of faith. And we can believe that everything is possible as we put our trust in God, knowing that God always accomplishes what he sets out to do. I challenge you today, God has already done his part. Now it's time for us to do ours. Amen? Truth of the matter is, too many times I'm guilty of sitting around on my hands. But the word of God tells me that I am God's hands. I am God's feet. I am God's mouth in the visible world in which we live. Now, I'm not submitting to you or suggesting to you that I literally am the hand of God, but I can be God's hand extended in a visible, tangible way to a lost and a herd in a dying world. It's one thing for me as a minister of the gospel to get up here and tell you about God's love, to tell you about God's hand of health and healing power and, and God's embrace and so on and so forth. But it's another thing for me to flesh out the gospel and for you to flesh out the gospel and to let people know that in this dire time in which we're living, in this time where people are looking for hope, in this time where there's a lot of chaos and uncertainty that's taking place, we know that the master of the storm is at the helm of the ship of life. And no matter what may come our way, our God is victorious. And we can triumph. We can experience his blessings. We can be victorious in every situation of life. I humbly submit to you that God is looking for individuals who are willing to step out of the box of complacency and start taking God at his word. I go back to what I said at the beginning of the message. If you're not happy with the way that your life is going, change it. If you're not happy with where you're at in your spiritual walk, change it. 
Go back to the altar. Confess whatever needs to be confessed. Pray for that joy to be returned to your life, to be restored to your life. Pray and ask God to reveal himself to you like he did at the moment of salvation when you knew that your burdens have been rolled away and in its place you have been given life eternal, the joy of the Lord, and come flooding into your life like boundless fathoms of love. Friend, I'm here to tell you today that God is desiring for you to take a drink from living water and experience the living truth of his word. Someone who's ready for someone to reveal the plans that he has for us in our life is whom God's looking for. You might be thinking, but pastor, you don't understand what it would take to make the necessary changes in my life that need to be made. You know what? You're absolutely right. I don't, and neither do you. But I know someone who does. I know someone who does. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. God, my friend, already has the solutions to every circumstance, to every situation that will ever confront you. God already has it worked out. Do you believe this morning that God is omniscient? Do you believe that he knows beginning to end? Do you believe that he's a God that nothing catches him off guard, nothing catches him by surprise? Do you believe that you're special? Do you believe that, that God has created you in his own image? That God has literally indwelt you with the spirit of the living God? And God has you, God has me here on the planet earth for such a time as this to make a difference in the kingdom of God. You know, as I drive around the city of Harrisonburg, as I drive out in the surrounding countryside into Rockingham, Augusta, Shenandoah, Page, and over into Pendleton County. I see a lot of people. I see a lot of unhappy faces. I see, and you know, and listening in on conversations, not that I'm eavesdropping, but sometimes you can't help but hear people talking when you're standing in line at the store or, or when you're out in the public or whatever. You know, I, I've never seen a time where there's so much unrest and uncertainty. We're living in a time where human life is of little value. It's nothing for someone to walk up and, and take your life just because they don't like the way you looked at them or maybe because of the uniform you're wearing or because of the way you comb your hair or you have something they want or whatever. I mean, we're living in a crazy time. But I'm here to tell you today that you and I have a message that is worth telling. You and I can introduce individuals to Jesus Christ who indeed has come to set the captive free. We can introduce to people Jesus Christ who's come to bind up the brokenhearted. We can introduce to individuals Jesus Christ who has come to reveal that there is a God who loves us despite my unworthiness. In his eyes, I am a person of worth. I am a person of value, and so are you, and so is the deepest, darkest sinner out there. Jesus Christ went to the cross for them, and they need to hear that. You're not happy with your life? Then change it. I challenge you today. Quit looking at the problems and start looking at the problem solver. Did you hear what I said? Are you awake this morning? I'm not sure. I'm looking back and some of you are sitting there like this. I'm not sure if you're awake or not. Are you awake this morning? If you are, wave your hand at me. Okay, some of you didn't wave your hand. If they didn't wave their hand, bump them and wake them up, okay? I'm going to say it again. Quit looking at the problems and start looking at the problem solver. He can take care of your situation if you ask him to. Nothing, my friend, is too hard for him. There is no situation that you presently are facing or you'll face in the future that God cannot turn around and bring something good out of it. He is always working on your behalf. He's always working on mine. I don't care if it's an unsaved loved one. I don't care if you've got someone that you care about that's involved in drugs or some kind of other vice that has a hold on you. You can let go of it today. You can experience God's changing and redeeming grace by casting your cares upon him and allowing him to break that chain that has held you back in bondage for so long and walk in the freedom and the liberty that Christ alone provides. He is always, he is always working on my behalf and yours. Romans 8, 28 tells us, for we know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. 
So I ask you today, are you ready to step out of your old life and into the new one that God has waiting for you? Scripture tells us that God is doing something fresh and new, but there's one catch. There's one catch. Listen very carefully. The condition and the requirement for receiving the new is letting go of the old. Reminds me of a story that I read about in John chapter 5 of the man of, at the pool of Bethesda, the place of blessing. No doubt he had witnessed firsthand many individuals receiving their healing over the past 38 years that he had been there. Repeatedly the devil had taunted him and tormented him and whispered in his ear, you're never going to get your healing. Why don't you just give up? Why do you even bother? But one day, hallelujah, one day, the water didn't just stir, but the one who could make it stir stood in front of him. Man, I get chill bumps even saying that. The water didn't just stir, but the one who could make the water stir was standing in front of him. How many of you know that makes all the difference in the world? That makes all the difference in the world. And today, I submit to you, it's not just the fact that the waters are stirring, but I believe with all of my heart this morning, the one who stirs the water is here today, standing in front of you. What do you need? What do you need? Jesus asked this individual one question. Do you want to be healed? There in John 5, verse 6. Friend, hear me this morning. At that moment, when Jesus stood in front of him and asked him if he wanted to be healed, there was not enough disease in the entire universe to keep that individual in the same condition he was in. The only one that could keep him from getting his blessing, from receiving his blessing, was himself. So I ask you this morning in closing, as our praise team makes their way back up, what do you want from the Lord today? What do you need Jesus Christ to do for you? Because the only one who can keep you from your blessing is you. The only one that can keep you from receiving your blessing is you. God stands ready to bless each and every one of us. All we have to do is ask and believe that God can and will do what his word says that he will do. God has already provided provision for all that we will ever need. And I challenge you this morning, let it begin today. Allow 2015 to be the year that you change it, that you change it with God's help and receive complete victory over every situation that has robbed you of God's blessings in the past. It's a brand new year. You've got a blank page in front of you. What entry are you going to make on it that will prove that on January 4th, 2015, at First Assembly of God in Harrisonburg, Virginia, I finally got to the place to where I was tired of the way things were going in my life. I was tired of being complacent. I was tired of sitting on my hands. I was tired of accepting things the way that they were. I was tired of allowing the devil to tell me that God didn't love me, that God didn't care about me, that God didn't want to change me. I was tired of feeling like a nobody. And it was at that moment that I said, God, if you can accept me just as I am, Lord, I surrender my life over in complete surrender to you. No more complacency, no more apathy, no more being content with where I am at. But today, God, with your help, I'm going to change it that Jesus Christ may be the Lord of all, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords of my life. And 2015 is going to be a year where I changed it and made a difference for the kingdom of God. Remember, the only one that can keep you from receiving your blessing is you. Jesus Christ today is standing before you with arms open wide. I challenge you, let today be the beginning of a brand new year in which God blesses you and anoints you and uses you in ways that you've never been used before.
for his glory. Pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, I thank you today that you are a life changer. That God, through your anointing, through your blessing in our lives, we also can be world changers when we are equipped and anointed with your spirit from on high. Today, God, I just sense that you're stirring, stirring hearts. God, it's not just that the waters are being stirred, but the one who stirs the water is here today. You're challenging us, God. You've spoken to us today. I know in my own life, God, you've challenged me. You've, Lord, reignited in me a passion and a desire for the lost and hurting world in which I live, Lord, to be quick to respond to the needs of others around me, Lord, to open my eyes. And Father God, rather than being content with what's been done up to this point in time, Lord, that there's new things to be done for your kingdom. And you're wanting to use each and every one of us. This morning, with heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm going to ask a twofold question. First of all, if by chance you're here and you don't know this Jesus that we've been talking about, all you believe that he exists, You believe that he's a miracle-working God. You believe all that the Word of God says about him, but you've never asked him into your life as your personal Savior and Lord. You don't know what it is to have a personal relationship with him. If that's you this morning, I'm not going to drag it out. I'm not going to do a lot of fanfare. I'm simply going to ask you, do you know for a fact that you're a child of God, that Jesus Christ is your Lord, soon-coming King, and that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that heaven would be your eternal home? If this morning you don't know that, but you'd like to, would you simply raise your hand that we might pray together with you? Anyone at all? Yes. Anyone else? One hand is already going up. Is there yet another? I'm going to ask a second question this morning, and that is this. Do you desire for God to change you? Maybe there's something in your life, and it's a personal issue between you and God. You don't have to tell me. I can't change it. Only you can and only God can. But today, if there are things in your life that you today want to say, God, I need you to change it. And Lord, maybe it's a closer walk with him. Maybe it's a changing of my desire where I'm not so much caught up in myself and I need to be more on fire for God, an instrument that God's Holy Spirit can be channeled and directed through. There's a need for change. You're willing to admit that today. Would you simply raise your hand that we might pray with you? Hands are going up all over. Yes, 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 yes. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor this morning. If you're physically able, would you just make your way down to the front right now? Just get up out of your seat and make your way down to the front. We want to have a congregational prayer on this first Sunday of the year of 2015. Go ahead and make your way up toward the front as close as you can get to make room for others and feel free to fan out to my right, your left. I want you to look this way for just a moment. I don't want you to believe that you can change it just because Pastor Jeff says you can change it. I want you to believe that you can change it because of what the Word of God says you can change it. You can, I can, do all things through Christ who strengtheneth us. That means that I can change Things in my life that I'm not happy with, things in my life that I'm not content with, things in my life that I know if I'm honest with you and you're honest with me, that I really need to change if I really desire a closer walk with God, owning up to it and taking this opportunity right now to ask God for help, for strength to make those changes possible. So this morning, before we have a congregational prayer, I want us to just take a moment Let's do some introspection. I want there to be some time one-on-one with God, and we're not in any hurry today. 
I'm not going to drag the service out unnecessarily. But I think that too many times we get in a hurry when it comes to having an encounter with God. And God's not in a hurry. He's not in a hurry. I mean, I, I read it all the time in Scripture where God has certain things for certain individuals. He's never in a hurry. He never leaves. It's always the individual who walks away, not God. Ever notice that? So today, can you just take a moment, as I take a moment, and let's just, right now, just lay it all out on the altar. I mean, again, it's a personal thing. I, I can only encourage you to do so. But let's lay it all out on the altar. What is it that you need God to do? And just shut yourself with him for a few moments. Oh, God. Today, Lord. I'm going to ask you to pray along with me in respect to the individual who raised their hand to invite Jesus into their life. I realize that many of us here today are born-again believers, but we want to pray this prayer. Maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you needed to. Would you just repeat after me, and then we're going to pray a prayer as well that God will change us into the individuals that we need to be. Would you repeat after me, please? Dear Lord, I come today emptying myself of all that I am, totally dependent upon you. I confess I'm a sinner. I need you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Wash away my every sin. Be my Lord. And write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I confess that thou art the Christ, the only begotten, Son of God, who takes away the sins of the world. I want you to be my Lord. I want to be your child. Thank you for hearing my prayer, for saving my soul, and giving me this precious gift of eternal life. I love you, Jesus. I want to serve you. Give me the ability to be found faithful in service to you. And Lord... Today, search me. Every crevice, every nook, every hidden little cranny, search it out with your precious Holy Spirit. Purify me. Anoint me. Use me. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Allow me 
to be a vessel that can make a world changer, that can make a difference in showing the love of the Lord to those around me. Jesus, I want to be yours in every area of my life, a closer walk with you, that as others see me, they don't see me, but they see you working and living in me. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can we just give a praise offering to the Lord this morning? I want to encourage you that as you prayed that prayer today, that God heard it. And today is a brand new day. It's a brand new day. Do you believe that? Oh, come on. Do you believe that? I believe that God has great things in store for us in this year of 2015. If you walk out of here in the same shape that you were, it's not because God didn't do his part. It's a matter of me opening myself to the Lord allowing him to make the change in me that needs to be made that I can be a world changer for Jesus Christ. 2015, change it for the kingdom of God. God bless you. Our praise team is going to close us out with a closing song. Join with them in singing. Give me an opportunity to get to the door to shake your hand. I pray that you're going to have a great day in the Lord. Remember those of you in the nominating committee are meeting today at 5.30 in my office. If you have nominations that you would like to make for either a board member or a corporate secretary, please submit those names before leaving here today to one of the committee members. Remember the service tonight at 6.30. We look forward to seeing you then. God bless you.